Okay, so uh, we have uh, so far completed this uh, longest section in this uh, treatise dealing with the four noble truths or as we have pointed out we rather call them the four according to Abhidharma Kosha the four truths of the nobles because actually we have to be noble we have to have a direct realization of nirvana to understand the four noble truths as being actually one truth because finally you will find the similar ideas even in the Theravada scripture the ultimate uh, truth is uh, only one it is uh, nirvana and uh, uh, after the description of the four noble truths comes the uh, explanation of the four bases of usually translated four bases of supernatural powers but uh, actually it means uh, the uh, idi padas idi literally means uh, success ijati iti idi hmm? so uh, it actually means the four bases of success success in what uh, success in uh, the uh, ability to use supernatural knowledge to penetrate the depths of the uh, doctrine or of the Dharma. Actually, we need a specially deep concentration to penetrate all the details and all the different aspects of the Buddha's teachings. Uh, we have explained according to the tradition Buddha under the Bodhi tree also used the supernatural powers namely the Pube Nivasa seeing the innumerable previous lives and uh, also the uh, Divya Chakshu the uh, divine eye to see how we beings according to our uh, karma we die and are born again in different states of existence according to uh, the our circumstances especially the karma circumstances which are leading but it does not mean very important to understand that everything is karma this is clearly explained in the scriptures. Karma is uh, only one uh, and the principal aspect in the process of forming the mind. Now, generally, in the northern tradition, in southern tradition, first we master the shamatha, then we go to vipassana. Uh, this is a rule which is uh, kept more or less very strictly in the uh, original scriptures of the disciples. Now, the mastery of shamatha is also presented by mastery of these four uh, bases of success. Success in practicing the supernatural powers. So, uh, in order to attain realization, in order to attain enlightenment, uh, there is uh, the 37 causes of enlightenment has to have to be uh, gathered. If they are not gathered, we will not attain the enlightenment. And the order is as you can see in Yogacara Bhumi Shastra and in other uh, scriptures, also in uh, the uh, suttas like uh, Samanyafala Sutta and so on. You will see first uh, 
the practice of Shila in our scripture also. It is explained in a very brief way. There has to be the base in Shila. Then the practice of Shamatha, Shila being the base for the practice of Shamatha, in the sense that Shila, the essence of Shila is discipline. And then the base of progress into the uh, enlightenment is the four foundations of mindfulness. They are the base. When we have the uh, four foundations of mindfulness, then one can practice the, uh, the four four efforts, samapadana, or four correct efforts, which means that uh, you are uh, making effort, chandam janeti, viyamati, chitam paganhati, uh, viryam uh, arambeti, that means he is uh, enthusiastic, giving rise to enthusiasm, he is uh, uh, exercising his, his mind, he is uh, putting effort, he is uh, uh, very much uh, inclined in the practice of, uh, of uh, eliminating those unwholesome dharmas that uh, may arise. Uh, so they, he does not let them arise. And if they arise, upananam uh, pajahati, he also makes the same effort. If these uh, arise, he will leave them. Then, he, uh, he, Anupadaya, uh, uh, he is uh, uh, making effort for uh, giving rise to the uh, kusalas, to the wholesome dharmas, and he is making effort to make this. Uh, uh, these wholesome dharmas last, makes them stay, makes them stay. Hmm? Kusalanam, damanam, titya. So these are the four uh, samapadana, the four correct efforts. And these idipadas, the basis of success, they come after these four correct efforts. And they represent the mastery in shamatha, the mastery in samadhi, so to say, with a worldly object. We first practice samadhi on a worldly object, in or just like breath and so on, in order to master the super mundane samadhi, which is the content of liberation. So uh, this Mastery of shamatha, normally, always, the suttas explain the jhanas, either the four rupa jhanas or the four rupa and four arupa jhanas, depend on the scriptures, sometimes only the four, sometimes all eight samapatis. And then, All these, so to say, in order to get enlightenment, we need two equipments. We need uh, punya sambara, equipment of merit, and we need uh, vija sambara, we need equipment of uh, wisdom, which is vipassana. Vipassana is a synonym of wisdom. And to the uh, Punya Sambara belong the uh, uh, Satta Sadhamma, the seven uh, the seven good dharmas like mindfulness and so on, and also the jhanas. 
Jhanas belong to the Punya Sambar. I mean the Jhanas with a worldly object. Not the, the content of liberation in Indian tradition, no matter whether it is Buddhism or other, is Samadhi. And the correct Samadhi in Abhidhamma is explained as the eight Samapatis, eight attainments. So, uh, when we have these eight attainments and uh, these uh, sata sadamas, we have the punya equipment and we can practice wisdom. So that's why always in the scriptures first comes the practice of the dhyanas. Buddha explains in order to attain the other shore, we have to know how to swim. And he compares jhanas to swimming. We have already explained that uh, the jhana samyutta explained this principle. Then, idipadas for mastery of the supernatural powers. Because the Buddhas, they use supernatural powers to attain the supreme enlightenment. And we have also explained that the uh, power of enlightenment depends on the power of the mind. The powerful mind has a powerful merits and that's why he can share his enlightenment with many, many beings and influence many, many beings. So it is said the, in the, like in the Tika of Brahmajala Sutta that the light of the Pakuti Arahat, of the uh, ordinary Arahat, is like the light fly, the light of the uh, grave of the of the arahat with the jhanas is uh, bigger, like a lamp. The light of the great arahats of the maha savakas is uh, still bigger. The light of the supreme savakas sariputta is still bigger. The light of the pratyeka buddha is still bigger, like a moon. Hmm? And light of the buddha is like the sun, illumining the whole earth. Hmm? So our, the power of our enlightenment depends on the power of, uh, actually, of our mind. And power of our mind depends on the uh, depths of the practice of the jhanas and of these four bases of the supernatural powers, which are the base for the supernatural powers. That's why they are called the base of success. Success in what? In the abhinya in the supernatural knowledge. We cannot practice supernatural knowledge without the basis. So, uh, after that comes the Prayoga Marga. This is all within the Sambara Marga, the, the path of equipment. The path of effort is the five faculties and the five forces. They lead to the seven causes of enlightenment, which are both uh, mundane and supernatural. And finally, the Eightfold Noble ba Pass. When the Eightfold Noble Pass, as we have explained, becomes one unit, it can only become one unit when we have the direct experience of the ultimate object for the Buddhist, the Nirvana, then we have, after Prayoga Marga, the Darshana Marga, the direct seeing of the object of liberation. After direct seeing of object of liberation, then the uh, Bhavana Marga, the, we cultivate this knowledge of the supernatural, of, of, of the Nirvana, of the ultimate object, until the complete enlightenment until Buddhahood, no matter whether Buddhahood of the disciples or Buddhahood of the Buddhas for themselves, or the Buddhahood of the Bodhisattvas who aim for the supreme knowledge. So these uh, Idipadas, strictly speaking, 
they come before the vipassana. Then we have seen here they come after, in a way, after the vipassana, because the Four Noble Truths, they are the object of the vipassana of the savakas. Through penetration of the Four Noble Truths, the savakas attain, the disciples attain the Buddhahood. But now, uh, why do these uh, bases of supernatural powers in our text come after the object of the liberation of the Savakas, the Four Noble Truths. This is very important to understand. I myself, I have a little experience of living in Burma and being trained in Burma. I was told in Burma, even now, there are some monks who misuse the supernatural powers to gain a lottery and they get a mass of money hmm? they become very rich because they can see through the lottery tickets uh, the number this is also part of the supernatural uh, abilities knowledges hmm? one can misuse it and everybody who studies Buddhism knows the story of Devadatta the cousin of Buddha who was uh, really great as far as supernatural powers are concerned but he has had no interest in vipassana if he had interest in vipassana he would have become buddha very fast with the power of his mind incredible power of his mind he could have achieved uh, easily uh, the path of the disciples not to speak about the other path. Now, because of his, of his jealousy, he tried, as we know from many stories, he tried to get rid of Buddha and become the leader of the Sangha, being always jealous. But he did not succeed because nobody can kill the Supreme Buddha, so at least the scriptures, Abhidharma, has this explanation. So finally, due to his sins, the earth opened and he fell into the earth, and while falling into the earth, into the Avicii hell, he, he took refuge in the Buddha, and the Buddha told that he, after incredible kalpas in the Avicii hell, he will become the Pratyeka Buddha when he comes back from the depths of the hell. So, uh, with the power of the mind, the uh, liberation becomes very easy. But this power of the mind can be also misused. So, uh, the uh, all, in fact, those who can do uh, great good or great evil, they do so due to the power of the mind. And this power of the mind is ultimately attained by this practice of these four bases of success. Hmm? Now, let us come to the text. What are the four bases of success? Actually, success here in both in mundane and in supermundane. So classically we divide the supernatural powers into six supernatural powers. The first five, which uh, uh, possibly Devadatta was also able to acquire, especially the first one, the supernatural power of bodily transformations. He was a master at that. These are mundane supernatural powers. You don't need to practice vipassana, you don't need to penetrate the nature of the self and of the world in order to attain these uh, mundane supernatural powers. Once you have them, you can use them for doing a very substantial good and you can also use them for doing very substantial evil. All the, actually, the 
great evil doers in history they also uh, had a very powerful mind but they used it in order to uh, kill to dominate not in order to benefit the sentient beings so for this very reason this uh, basis of supernatural powers and the supernatural powers come after the practice of the vipassana that means after the practice of wisdom being the object of wisdom being the four noble truths by penetrating the four noble truths your uh, enlightenment is guaranteed you become the sotapanna you become the one who entered the stream leading to the nirvana you cannot the path itself will lead you there you cannot miss it and what happens when you have this direct vision of the ultimate object it happens that the the world does not seem to be real this is the advantage of having this uh, direct experience of the ultimate object the object which is in the world but beyond the world symbolized in buddhism by lotus flower lotus flower can grow in the mud symbolizing the world but in its essence remains always pure so uh, what are the supernatural powers they are these worldly supernatural powers they are five we will discuss them they are now the topic of the our remaining section of the treatise the first is the power of physical transformations second is the power of divine ear third is the power of seeing the previous lives no third is the power of reading the minds of others fourth is the power of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, seeing the previous lives the fifth is the power of divine sight divine eye so these are the five worldly powers and the six is the power of uh, knowing that the causes of worldly existence have been exhausted and there is no more uh, coming into this samsaric existence anymore no these causes do not exist anymore so knowing this is the last final birth the causes of the next one cannot appear we have explained all that now uh, this uh, basis of supernatural powers of uh, especially of the worldly supernatural powers they are four the first one is called chanda chanda we can translate there are many many different translations because chanda actually in sanskrit has many many meanings we will find in the scriptures such sayings like uh, chanda mulika sabbe dhamma hmm? actually all in our experience uh, especially the worldly experience is based on desire when we desire we experience when we don't desire what will we experience we will not experience in terms of the differentiating mind the differentiating mind needs a desire so we translate it in our text as enthusiasm 
enthusiasm may be uh, the best equivalent of this ardent desire. Chanda means ardent desire. Ardent desire to achieve something. If we don't have this ardent desire, enthusiasm to achieve something, we will never achieve it. So, uh, whatever uh, special qualities we may gain, special knowledge we may gain, we gain it because of our enthusiasm. And unless we have developed this enthusiasm into the extreme, we will never attain any supernatural powers. It is impossible. The text also shows this very clearly. So when we have enthusiasm, then we practice Vyayama. Vyayama here actually we can translate as an effort. Effort in practice. Because we have enthusiasm, we put effort into our practice. Then when we put effort into our practice, our mind will stay with the practice. When our mind will stay with the practice, this is, it will become a pure mind. So here chitta, chitta normally means a mind in general, but here actually it means a pure mind, which has been purified by practice based on enthusiasm. Hmm? So uh, this can only happen that the mind stays uh, pure because we have mimamsa, we have analytical knowledge how to use the previous abilities, how to use correctly our enthusiasm, how to use correctly our practice, how to use correctly the purity of the mind to attain the given aim, be it uh, learning how to fly or be it uh, uh, learning how to multiply our bodies, uh, be it how to uh, walk on the water and so on. All these uh, super natural attainments are unthinkable without cultivating these four uh, bases of success to the extreme. Now, uh, the texts also explain we can attain these supernatural powers not only by practicing, they can be temporarily attained by drugs, by mantras, and they can be temporarily also attained, uh, or they can be attained because of our previous practice in previous lives. They are cases uh, I have uh, myself had an experience of someone in Sri Lanka who naturally is born with uh, some of these powers. He does not need to strive for that, but he has them naturally. It can also happen. But uh, for most of us, uh, with very, very few exceptions, they are gained only by a systematic practice with uh, these conditions, with extreme enthusiasm and with a sharp analytical mind, which can teach us how to keep a middle way, not to put too much effort, not to put too little effort, hmm? not abhoga, not anabhoga, but to keep the mind ultimately balanced. The, as Visuddhimaga explains, the ability for deep concentration is based on the balance of the faculties. Balance of the faculties is also based on the mimamsa, on the analytical wisdom. We have to on the base of mindfulness, 
we have to know how to balance concentration with wisdom, with faith, and with effort. When these have been balanced, then the concentration, the one-pointedness of the mind becomes stable and continues. Otherwise, in our case, we may attain the one-pointedness of the mind, but it will not be lasting because of the imbalance of the, uh, the uh, too much effort or too little effort. If too much effort, it will lead to excitement. If uh, effort is not balanced by uh, concentration, it will lead to uh, excitement. If concentration is not balanced by effort, by faith, by wisdom, it will lead to sinking of the mind, to torpor. Again, if concentration is not balanced by uh, the uh, effort and faith, then it will lead to sinking of the mind. If, if uh, wisdom is not balanced by concentration, by faith, by correct effort, uh, it will lead to depression. So, when only when these faculties are perfectly balanced, then uh, one can remain in the state of the uh, deep concentration for long, long time and use it for attaining these supernatural powers. So the text explains that these basis of the supernatural powers, they can be attained in all four dhyanas, but the fourth dhyana is the ideal state for them and normally in all the books, when you study Visuddhimagga, the same principle, Yogacara, Bhumishastra, same principle. Normally, the supernatural powers for those who are inclined to practice them, they have to have a complete mastery of the fourth dhyana. So, uh, so uh, that is why the texts are, uh, are always emphasizing, you will find in all script, many scriptures uh, dealing with meditation. So, evam samahite chite parisude pariodate uh, anangane and so on. Anenjapate, which is most important. Anenjapate means not having any uh, fluctuations. When the mind has no any fluctuations, it becomes completely purified. It becomes mudubute, it becomes very pliable, soft. Kamanie, huh? pliable. In this condition, then one can learn these supernatural powers. In uh, the uh, Theravada tradition, as you will find in Visuddhimagga, in Patisambhidamaga, the most important practice for the supernatural powers is the practice of the Kasinas. They are not mentioned here, but the mastery of the kasinas and then the exercises on the base of the kasina, the 14 exercises as described in the Visuddhimagga, lead to the uh, mastery of the itipadas. So you uh, practice these eight basic kasinas, the eight, uh, the four colors and the four elements kasinas. Then you jump from first dhyana to third dhyana, from third dhyana to the first uh, arupa dhyana, from the first arupa dhyana 
to the third Arupa Dhyana, from the third Arupa Dhyana again to the first Dhyana, and then you change these casinas. In a way, these Arupas, they are also kind of casinas, because casina means Kritsya Ayatana, the complete, uh, non-divided object. So, a complete non-divided object you can have on the base of colors or uh, the mental uh, vision of the elements or you can also have on the base of the formless absorption. And uh, then having jumped uh, anuloma, pratiloma from uh, first to the last, from the last to the first again, and having jumped the dhyanas again, anuloma, pratiloma, and having changed all these uh, different topics, then your mind becomes very powerful. Because you can change very fast all levels of uh, consciousness without clinging. This is very important. When you do that successfully, then especially on the base of such casinas like the fire casina or the light casina, you can then uh, jump into the so-called preparatory jhana, which is uh, preceding these uh, supernatural powers. So you train your mind in such a way that uh, it can jump into wherever you want it to jump. First, for that, as we have explained, you have to practice the mastery of the dhyana. Visuddhimagga explains the ten idis. The first of the idis uh, we will not go into them because they have no direct uh, relation to our text. But the first of these ten idis is the Mano Maya Idi. The, uh, the practitioner of the dhyana has to practice the isolation of the mind to such a perfection that he can, so to say, draw his mental body out of his physical body. Like a uh, sword is drawn uh, out of the scabbard, scabbard, you say it, no? So, uh, all like a snake draws himself out from his own skin, so an uh, advanced meditator draws his mind from his body. Then, his body and the mind will mix like uh, iron and uh, uh, the fire hmm? and becomes very pliable, soft and you can use it for any purpose you want to use it. So this is the secret. And these four, the text explained that the four bases of supernatural powers are all characterized by concentration. We practice them in order to attain the uh, uh, most powerful possible concentration. Uh, according to some suttas, uh, like the uh, Upaklesa Sutta, uh, you will find that the Buddha under the Bodhi tree has first uh, purified the jhanas. Uh, the story goes that he remembered in his childhood how uh, attending his father on the ploughing festival, he spontaneously remembered his experience of the first jhana in his childhood and reproduced it and then practice all the jhanas he has learned before doing the austerities, six years austerities. He has mastered under his teachers, Ramaputta and so on, the uh, 
all the jhanas, rupas and arupas, and he has been practicing the purity of these jhanas and then used them for supernatural powers, uh, seeing his past lives and understanding how we beings are uh, reborn and die on the base of our karmic formations. So this led him to penetrating the law of dependent origination. So it is uh, at least presented in the uh, tradition of the suttas, of the scriptures of the disciples. Of course you will find the different ideas in, in Zen and in Tantra, but we base ourselves on these basic scriptures which are necessary to understand all the other techniques. So, uh, so this concentration is, has to be based on these four factors and these four factors have to be well balanced. In uh, the uh, northern tradition, they, these four factors, Sama Padana, Sama, uh, uh, Sama Padana or Sama or Padana Sankara. Padana Sankara in our text, you have to combine these four with uh, Sama Padana or with Padana Sankara. Padana Sankara means all the uh, mental, wholesome mental factors which lead the meditator into the uh, powerful, wholesome mind. We have to understand that uh, the dhyanas, same like uh, all the uh, stages of liberation, they are based on the powerful holza mind. What is the nature of the powerful holza mind? Powerful positive mind. When you give rise to a powerful holza mind, powerful positive mind, it will make a deep mark in your consciousness and you will never forget it. Once you have attained the dhyana, it will, this knowledge of dhyana will accompany you practically whole life. Even if you lose it, you will easily regain it. Similarly, once you have attained the sotapanna and higher stages, you will never forget it because they will make such a deep imprint in the mind that you can never forget it. Similarly, when you uh, have attain the high achievement in Vipassana, Sotapanna and so on, it will accompany you even in the next lives to come. Similarly, if you have a very powerful negative karma, unwholesome karma, like killing your parents or uh, killing a saint, uh, this will also accompany you in the next lives for many many lives even like Mogalana is said to have a black body a blue body because he spent many 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 eons in hell before uh, becoming uh, Mogalana So uh, the, uh, uh, there is a question, how does one succeed in the basis of supernatural power 
that possesses concentration due to zeal and determined striving. Hmm? Determined striving is translating the uh, Padana Sankhara. And similarly to zeal, we have explained these four, strictly speaking, these four bases of supernatural powers, they, you, we should understand them as coming together. Similarly, like the five faculties and the five powers, they have to come together to enable you uh, success in the Prayoga Marga, which is in the path of effort, which leads to direct seeing. Without the path of effort, there will never be path of direct seeing. So, uh, these uh, this, uh, Padana Sankharas, also in the northern tradition, when you study Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, uh, they are identified with the eight, eight uh, Sankharas one needs. Uh, to attain the uh, uh, samadhi. And uh, they are similar also, this chanda, vyayama, uh, then uh, uh, prasharabdi is there. Chanda, Vyayama. Uh, then uh, after Prasharabdi, you have uh, the uh, you have uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Upeksha. Chetana, Abhoga, Anabhoga, hmm? these are the uh, uh, Sankharas, the formations which lead you to the success in one-pointedness of the mind. Here you have the same principle, this one-pointedness of the mind will be successful to the extent of leading to the supernatural powers. The extreme success in one-pointedness of the mind leads to supernatural powers. And there will not be the extreme success in the one-pointedness of the mind without practicing thoroughly these four bases. This is very important to understand. So dhyana makes the mind powerful. Without the dhyana, we cannot get a powerful mind and the powerful mind gets a perfection by the practice of these four foundations. And they are explained. Uh, this uh, uh, enthusiasm is an ardent desire. Huh? Desire is chanda for the thing one is searching for, uh, be it you want to learn to fly, you want to learn to walk in water, you want to uh, learn to uh, uh, make your uh, make from one body, two bodies, three bodies, four bodies, uh, to make uh, uh, again the uh, different bodies, uh, one to uh, do all kinds of incredible deeds, you will do them on the basis of these four bases. W without having practiced them to perfection, you're, you will never be able to achieve this. So the determined striving, this uh, translates Padana Sankhara, 
So it means the formations which make the striving successful, so to say. They are mindfulness, uh, ingenious uh, uh, wisdom, panya, joy, happiness. All these are also uh, naturally uh, important factors in the process of uh, enlightening the mind, in making the mind clear. So when the uh, when zeal is a prominent factor in attaining the concentration, it is called it is called the uh, concentration based on zeal. Similarly, when effort is prominent in getting the supreme concentration, it is uh, called the concentration based on effort, and so on. Hmm? Same for pure mind and same for uh, analytical wisdom. So uh, this, uh, if it is based on zeal, then you have to make the zeal equal. Similarly, you have to make the effort equal, you have to make the pure mind equal, you have to make the analytical mind equal in order to attain the supreme power of the concentrated mind. So it means you have to uh, to use the uh, yoga language. It is you have you will find the same principle in the uh, commentaries to the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, especially the Vachaspati Mishra commentary. Uh, this abhoga anabhoga abhoga from the root butch which means to bind to to bend you bend the mind to the object either with too much force then it will tend to excitement or you bend the mind to the object with too little force then it will sink so in order to keep the same mind for a long, long time, you have to avoid both the tendency to sinking and the tendency to excitement. When this, there is no more, there is absence of this tendency, then the effort becomes equal. Then you don't need abhoga, anabhoga. You, so to say, you stay spontaneously in the one-pointedness of the mind. Of course, you bend still your mind to the object. Without bending the mind to the object, you will not, uh, you will not experience the object. And jhana is the experience of the object. To experience the object, we don't need to think. In dhyana, we do not think, but we still experience the object by absorption with the object. That is dhyana. The thinking disappears, but the experience of the object lasts, and the experience of the object is thinking. This is very important to understand. This is the difference between the Western and Indian idea of dhyā, thinking. For thinking, we don't need words. We don't need concepts. We can, uh, absorbing in the direct absorption in the object is also thinking. But this thinking is intensive thinking. That's why explanation of the dhyana is upanidhyana. When this upanidhyana comes to perfection, then you don't need you don't need to uh, consciously to relax or you don't need consciously to strive. Your the mind 
moves naturally, smoothly, all the time, in the same condition. No more fluctuations. Such a mind naturally becomes very, very powerful. So there is no access, no deficiency. So uh, the uh, energy is saved. So one becomes completely as a, a pliable, harmonious, and it is durable. So famous story of the uh, the uh, one of the disciple was uh, striving so hard that he his kuti was full of blood. Then the Buddha, this uh, person who was very uh, fine, was uh, from a very rich family. So the Buddha, uh, because he was a musician, then he taught him that just like a string, if you, uh, if you uh, uh, make it too tight, it will not give a good sound. If you make it too loose, it will also not give a good sign. And being a musician, he immediately understood and attained what he wanted to attain by making his mind harmonious, smooth, easily workable, without access, without deficiency. This is a secret of these supernatural powers. So with such a condition, uh, one can play any tune as he wishes, one can use any resolution as he wishes to attain a supernatural condition. So one can uh, walk on fire, one can uh, walk on water, one can fly in the air, uh, one can turn earth into gold in terms of one's resolution to a certain thing one wants to achieve. Why? In order to understand that, we have to understand Buddhism because finally all the dharmas are contained in the mind. Without the mind, no dharma can arise whatsoever. So, uh, similarly, if one wants to learn to fly, as the text explains, then what will happen? One uh, puts into the mind the uh, lightness, keep it firmly in the mind, the quality of lightness, absorbs into this lightness, then uh, making use of his previous practice of these four bases of uh, success, he determines, goes to preparatory dhyana and determines he wants to fly and off he goes. Why? Because his mind has completely unified with that quality. So, of course, he will start by flying a little, just jumping, then jumping a little higher, a little higher. All this can be attained by putting more and more uh, effort more and more practice, more and more pure mind. That means a concentrated mind because the concentration is what purifies the mind. And uh, the 
correct understanding, analytical understanding of what he's doing. Hmm? So uh, on the basis of these four bases of supernatural powers, one can master all these supernatural powers that we explain in the coming uh, lectures or, and also one can do a lot of evil <laughs> of course uh, one can even so it is uh, told uh, the great desert of Rajasthan is the result of the anger of the Rishi hmm? so I have read hmm? Uh, why not? There are still some excavations showing that there were uh, cities there uh, which have, and uh, that there must have been fire because they have found uh, the traces of that. Uh, who knows? Anyway, with these uh, supernatural powers which seem, seem to have been not so uncommon at the time of Buddha and even after that, so uh, all different kinds of things can be achieved uh, with the mind because the mind is the base for all the phenomena. No mind, no phenomena. And how we experience the phenomena depends not only on the phenomena but also on abhujita, how we turn the mind into the phenomena. So by mastering the skill of turning the mind into the, to the phenomena, we can then master the phenomena themselves. But of course, it will all take a long, long, continuous effort. So that much for today's uh, lecture on this topic of the four bases of supernatural powers, four bases of success in making the mind, uh, giving it aptitude, ability of uh, incredible, not supernatural deeds. The supernatural deeds, uh, they also they call it is they call success success they, because they are due to success in the supreme concentration so this it is they are in sanskrit it is but they also can be uh, called the siddhas they are the uh, they are the siddhas based on the deep concentration and they were indeed uh, important part of the yoga. You will not find them only in Buddhism. You will find them in, in the Hindu scriptures. You will find them in Jaina scriptures. And you will find them also in uh, other religions. The powerful mind can do all kinds of miracles, which seem to be miracles, but which are quite natural for those who have this powerful mind. But they seem to be supernatural for us who do not have this. <laughs> okay, so that much for today. Let us not uh, surpass too much our time. So let us see if uh, Gautam comes with some questions or Sutriya. Anyone has any question? Anyone? You can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, so, Bhante, while I uh, was thinking, uh, just one question. You know, when the uh, Buddha passes away, Father, uh, I think when, sorry. Can you hear me now? <clears throat> Uh, so when the Buddha passes away, 
uh, he goes into the jhanas and comes backwards down and all that. And Aniruddha, I think, is telling everybody that yes. th this is happening. Yes, yes. So does that mean that Aniruddha has the capacity to see the minds of yes. others and he's seeing the mind of the Buddha Aniruddha also? He's a master of, especially of Divya Shotra. He was blind, but he could see yes. everything. And uh, of course, uh, he could also see the minds of others because uh, he was a master of the mind. No? So when you see your own mind, you can see the mind of the others. Because we don't see our own mind uh, thoroughly, in order to, to see our own mind, then you need some pattern. And this pattern is uh, very, very uh, much described in detail in the uh, uh, Abhidhamma. You need a pattern to see the mind. And key for seeing the mind is again the state of dhyana. This is very important to understand. Uh, Visuddhimaga explains that dhyana is base for the vipassana, but it does not explain why. So we have to guess. And fortunately, or meet some competent teachers who have this experience. When one is in dhyana and when one practices dhyana according to as described in the suttas, in the state of dhyana we can see the bhavanga. Hmm? We can see the base oh. of the mind. The base of the mind explains the continuity of the mind. The mind is always changing, but yet it, it appears and disappears moment by moment. But yet it has this continuity. Why it has this continuity? We are living, our mind appears and disappears uh, trillions and trillions of times in, during our lifetime, but yet it has continuity. How is it possible? Hmm? It does not make any sense. It is possible because there is continuity. This continuity is literally explained in Theravada as being the Bhavanga, which according to Asanga corresponds to Alaya. Alaya means a mind which clings. In uh, uh, Theravada, Alaya is the uh, synonym of tanha. Tanha means alaya, alaya means tanha. Because we have tanha, therefore our mind continues from life to life. Hmm? If we don't have tanha, then we don't have the reason for continuity of the mind from life to life. So the mind, so to say, uh, returns to its, to use the Yogacara idea, to its original nature, which is uh, suchness. The mind, uh, Nagarjuna says, the mind is not suchness, but doesn't, cannot leave the suchness. But the Yogacara says, the original nature of the mind is the very suchness. So this is very important to understand. So uh, we have the continuity because we have the reasons for this continuity. And the reasons for this continuity is this uh, bhavanga. Bhavanga means the cause of existence. Hmm? Anga means uh, hetu, among others. It has many meanings. So. Uh, we have the cause of existence because we have uh, this desire. Hmm? Now, again, we can use it for good, we can use it for bad. Hmm? If we want to practice the Bodhisattva path, we want to use it for good, so we are not interested to finish the cycle. If we uh, want to practice the more dualistic approach, we want to finish the cycle, because the cycle we penetrate it as being a suffering. But it is suffering, but there is no one who suffers. So this is a paradox. And uh, 
it is very difficult to go away uh, rationally from this paradox. There is suffering, but no one who suffers. So it's very logical, then, since there is no one who suffers, then, <laughs> then uh, the suffering is an illusion. And this is precisely what the Mahayana scriptures explain. Knowing suffering as non-existing, say the Nirvana, Mahayana Nirvana Sutra, is uh, the, uh, the truth of suffering. So we can use the same principles and explain in a different way. Similarly, there is the same idea in all Buddhist scriptures. Once you have the uh, Indiana, you can have direct experience of the base of the mind because the mind has withdrawn in the, into itself. And now, since your mind has withdrawn into itself, the Dhyana means Chitta Viveka, so you can see the object of your dhyana in the bhavanga itself. And when you see the object of the dhyana in the bhavanga itself, you will also see the flow of the mind into that object. So this is why the Theravada explained that uh, the, uh, the practice, practicing vipassana in dhyana means practicing the past immediately preceding past mind as being the object. Hmm? That is Samanantara Pratyaya, use the Theravada Abhidharma. So in the uh, northern tradition, it is connecting Samatha and Vipassana into one. So a different explanation, but explaining the same experience. So you observe the, uh, the uh, object in the alaya or you, object, you, you perceive the past object in the alaya because the present object has disappeared already. So however you explain, it is the same principle. Once you are in dhyana, you can see the object of the dhyana at the base of the mind. And then you will see also the mind which goes to that object. Then you can analyze accordingly all the mental factors which are content of this mind. Then we will talk about it with the Parachita Jnana. Then on the base of this, you can then, seeing your own conditioning of the mind in Dhyana and also not in Dhyana, in the wholesome and unwholesome states of existence, analyzing these mental factors. This is called the Anupada Vipassana. Then you can use it for seeing uh, the past mind. Past mind has also all these uh, different content. And so uh, you can also use it for seeing the minds of the others. It is not a problem because the mind of the others has the same structure as your own mind. Similarly, like when you see yourself as a skeleton, you can see all others as a skeleton, as the, our text is describing to the end of the universe, the end of the earth, you will only see skeletons, nothing else. And as the Visuddhimagga explains, this uh, bhikkhu who is practicing the um, uh, contemplation of the skeleton when a lady comes to him and uh, tries to seduce him and then does not succeed, goes away because he's practicing the asubha. Then the lady disappears, comes her husband chasing uh, after her, then asking, did you see uh, my wife? is that I saw some skeleton passing by. So uh, we only see in the, what 
what our uh, mind sees. And this mind, of course, when it becomes very powerful, it can see a very, very uh, incredible uh, subtle objects which normally we don't see. This is, and it becomes very natural for that mind. But it is, it looks like supernatural for the mind of others who do not see these subtle objects. So this is the advantage of the dhyana and of these four bases of supernatural powers that uh, uh, you can use them to understand better your own mind and you can use them to understand the mind of the others. And this is uh, described in, uh, in the, the Visuddhimagga, but Visuddhimagga itself does not give a clear method how to attain this uh, ability. because it is very much dependent on the teacher. So a different teacher can teach a different uh, ways how to structure the mind to be able to investigate it in yourself and in others. So that is why one who has a practice according to Sarvastivada, he will see according to Sarvastivada. One who has practice according to Theravada, he will see according to Theravada. So this makes it very interesting. We are determined by our own mind and we determine others also by the, our own mind in a way. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Bhante. That was wonderful. Uh, would anyone else like to ask a question? Bhante, if I can trouble you with one more uh, little bit silly question, but please forgive me. Uh, last time you mentioned uh, when you were discussing Ashubha, that in, um, no, not last time. I think it was many, many sessions ago you have mentioned this. That in, uh, I think I'm confusing it with the lectures which I'm editing. But I read this in your notes that uh, for the Theravada uh, practitioner of Ashubha, they can take the uh, bled, blood as the red kasina and, uh, you know, urine as uh, yellow same, kasina. Same principle for Shravakas you will find in the Norton Buddhism also similar. So uh, my question is really, um, I'm not sure that I understand that term casino very well. Uh, because uh, means, my... Uh, that, uh, suppose uh, you practice the red casino. Huh? First you start with a red device. Hmm? Then you make a very clear mental picture of that red device. Then when this uh, picture becomes very stable in your mind, you don't need any device outside. Then you merge, because of your one-pointedness of the mind, which you have cultivated, you merge with that, uh, uh, with that red device. Once you succeed it, you can extend it to infinity and you can draw it back to a small, uh, uh, like uh, top of the needle, make it little or make it bigger. This is a common practice. It's still practice now in Burma, very common practice. On the base of Kasina, you make uh, the mind like the uh, electronic microscope. You can see a small object as big object. You can see the, draw the big object into a small object. Hmm? So you have all optics inside your mind and uh, 
on this uh, principle also you can practice all these miracles you spread the casino of the earth and you walk on it on water like jesus christ saying no problem because you have the mind has a power to uh, to uh, may change the nature of the objects we are witnessing it every day but yet we do not believe that mind has such a power to uh, change the nature of the object yet we are experiencing every every day no exception uh, the mind changes the what we experience as a person or what we experience as a as a house will change because the mind is changing but the house remained the same the person remained the same but our perception of that person becomes completely different the most lovable person becomes the most hateful person hmm? have you not experienced that hmm? <laughs> so uh, we do this transformation of uh, the object by the mind all the time but yet we do not believe that the mind has such a power to transform it uh, knowingly but it definitely has and the secret of this is this casino practice that's why it is so important uh, for the attainment of mastering the concentration the traditional practice for mastering concentration are these casinos and in visuddhimagga also you have these 14 exercises with the casinos which brings you to these uh, idis hmm? so uh, uh, these casinos uh, teach you how you cultivate the mental image of the outer object how you stabilize it and on the base of stable mental picture you can uh, merge with that picture so that subject and object merge into one that's why dhyana is translated often as absorption uh, the difference between the object and the mind is uh, blurred hmm? and uh, this gives uh, the mind the uh, power of course one has to cultivate it and we in our case even in the state of dhyana there will be always fluctuations because of our old habits vasanas which we carry with ourselves and which are our natural self to live in the modern society we have to uh, uh, always change the mind uh, without thinking that it is something uh, <laughs> not desirable Okay, shall we transfer the merits and uh, finish here? Gotamji, kuch prashna hai, apke paas. Kol, kol dijiye. Hello. रूपावचर एंड अरूपावचर माइंड then how can they do evil because there is no akusala chitta in rupavachara and arupavachara they, they don't attain uh, uh, the uh, supernatural powers but they attain the powerful mind and the powerful mind uh, it is still powerful mind of the kamavachara of course there is no evil as such there is no hate in rupavachara it does not exist 
but uh, they by attaining rupa vachara they can only attain rupa vachara mind because they have powerful mind if they have weak mind they will not attain rupa vachara so when they have a powerful mind and they have no vipassana they can use this powerful mind to do many many evil terrible evil deeds hmm? like Genghis Khan <laughs> they can be supreme fighters and very smart in killing people and in organizing the armies to kill people like Tumerlan or whatever hmm? they also have very powerful mind but using it uh, for the purpose of uh, harming not for the purpose of helping hmm? but they uh, had very powerful concentration no doubt even the evil doers of our time like Stalin, Hitler and uh, Mao Zedong they also had very powerful mind but obsession with the self and obsession with power all this is in Kama Vachara plane not in Rupa Vachara plane but they practice they had we have explained this supernatural power they can be also obtained first of all by practice but also by birth due to previous life hmm? like uh, Devadatta Devadatta he has practiced uh, he had powerful minds in many many previous lives but he had no vipassana but very powerful mind it came with him from one life into another and uh, uh, so powerful mind but so yet due to his jealousy so evil so he was able to uh, do anything because of his jealousy and jealousy is of course dosa chitta and in Rupa Vachara, no dosa chitta, impossible. No dosa chitta in Rupa Vachara. But uh, those who practice uh, the Rupa Vachara chitta, when they are in Kama, unless they have Vipassana, they can do a lot of evil deeds. Because of uh, they have no Vipassana. Hmm? Spashthe? Rupa Vachara Chitta Vi Anicha Hai Okay So take care and uh, we do the Punya Parinama enough for today Okay, thank you Mati. We are getting some nice weather so Eta vata chame sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabha sampati sidya Eta vata chame sampadam punya sampadam sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabha sampati sidya Eta vata chame sampadam punya sampadam sabbe satta anumodantu sabha sampati sidya Aka Sutta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumo Ditwa Chiram Rakantilo Kasasana Aka Sutta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumo Ditwa Chiram Rakantu Desana Aka Sutta Chabumata Deva Naga Mahidika Punyanta Nanumo Ditwa Chiram Rakantu Tumampana Devo Vasatu Kalen Sasa Sampati Hotucha, Pito Bhavatu Lokocha, Raja Bhavatu Dhammiti, Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. See you next week and uh, have a beautiful and uh, have a nice week. And uh, 